My worst investment ever was investing in UCO USO. And I hear people talk about this and they mention, should I hold this long term? And other people say, no, don't ever hold it long term. It's bad. There's decay risk. And I totally agree with them, but I didn't really understand it. I, I couldn't, I wanted to prove it. Like why, I, wh why when I'm holding, I, I bought these like three years ago, maybe. And when I had them at one point, um, after two months, oil doubled in price, yet I was down money. If they're tracking oil, how can I be down money when oil doubles in price? From, and I'm, I'm not talking about overall, I'm talking about from the day it went from, say, $30 a barrel, I had like, say, $1,000. I had a lot more than $1,000, but say $1,000 at $30 a barrel. So oil was $30 a barrel, I had $1,000 worth of UCO and USO. Two months later, oil was $6 a barrel. Now I have $800 of UCO. I lost 20% even though oil doubled. It didn't make any sense. Let, let me just show you this website. It's a really great website. I'm going to put in USO. It's called StockSplitHistory.com. And I'm not using it for the stock splits, but you can. What I like about it is it inv it... It pretends you invested ten thousand dollars ten years ago in whatever ticker you put in. So in June two thousand ten, you invested ten thousand dollars. In June two thousand twenty, that ten thousand dollars is worth a thousand dollars for this for USO. So it went down ninety percent. It's a terrible investment. Like just to show you an example, Microsoft. Ten thousand dollars ten years ago is a hundred thousand dollars. That's a real investment. You went up 10 times because it's a great company. USO tracks oil one time. Oil goes up 1%, USO goes up 1%. Oil goes, oil goes down 1%, USO goes down 1%. UCO is double leveraged. Oil goes up 1%, UCO goes up 2%. That's what double leverage means. And there's triple, quadruple leverage securities, but this is double leverage. So UCO is so much worse. $10,000, if you invested it 10 years ago, you have $30 today. You Over 99% of your investment is gone. It would never go to zero because it works on percentages. So it would go like, as it could get really, really close to zero. But that's just such a terrible investment. And people... Even financial advisors, they would explain the K risk and all this stuff, but it didn't ever make sense. Well, why does it go down? And so I, during coronavirus, when I was really bored home from work back in March, I built a model to prove how this works. And just to, this is not part of the model. I just put this tab together for this video, just to prove a point. So if you had a hundred dollars, and I know this is an extreme situation, but say the first day of your stock went up 90%. So now you have 190 at the end of day one. So start of day two, you have 190. And if it goes down 90%, you're down to 19 bucks. So day three, you start with $19. It goes up 90%. And it just keeps doing this up 90, down 90, up 90, down 90. And I'm not doing more negative 90s than positive 90s it's both the same three positive 90s three negative 90s you have one dollar after six days and if you ask what if you started with a negative first and then positive it's always going to be the same one dollar after six days and then let me fix this okay so start with 90 and just to show you if you if it was 80 percent change each day You'd have five dollars after six days. It just takes a little longer to hit zero. You're gonna always hit zero, even if you did plus one percent, minus one percent, plus one percent. It will get to zero. It's just gonna take a little longer. So, like twenty percent, you lost twelve percent of your investment after six days. So the negatives outweigh the positives, and I'm not sure how to explain it in a video. 
to convey it. You kind of just have to play with it yourself. But the, that's the problem with these funds, especially leveraged. The negatives outweigh the positives so much more, and the leverage kills you. You'll never make money on leverage. So th this is the model I built to kind of prove to myself why I lost so much money. So I start with $100 in the model. And then the top is the days. So after the first day, it loses 4% the investment. And this is a randomizer. So it could be any number between negative 10% and positive 10%. It's totally random. Like if I hit refresh it, negative three the first day, negative four, negative nine, four, negative 10. It could be totally anything. There's no predictability. So let's just leave it like that. So on the first day, it went up 1%. That means your double leverage went up 2%. It, it's just rounded to one. It's probably, it's 0.7, so that's 1.4. Um, but it went up double this. And then this is triple leverage, and this is quadruple leverage. Same thing with every day, that's how it is. Just to, just to show you how leverage kills you. So after the first day, you get 1% on your 100 bucks, so you have $101. You're up 1% overall in your investment. The second day goes down 8%. So you lose 8% on the 101. Your investment is now down to $93. You lost 7% overall. It goes up 6%. That's 6% on 93. Now your investment is up to $99. You lost 1% overall. And it just does this. It just does this thousands of times. It, the days go, go out pretty far. And if you look at the double leverage, it just doubles whatever this is. So if 8%, this is 15% loss. And, and just to show you, this is the year. So after 365 days, if you go out to number 365 up here, on the USO, the 1X, you have $62 left. So you, you lost 38% of your investment. And on the double, you lost 88% of your investment after one year and then after two years it's almost all gone and forget about the quadruple and triple leverage it's it's all gone like almost right away the leverage just kills you with the negatives the negatives multiply and then when you have a a, a big negative even like a negative eight percent that makes it negative thirty percent and that just drags it down so much so let's refresh it. So you might get lucky, like you're down 90% after two years, but you, you probably hit a string of positives. If you get a hold of five years, which, which most people won't. See, after five years, it's, it's all blank. It's all blank again. It's down to, you see, there was a, must have been a string of positives at some point that really drove it up. And you could get lucky. I got, there were there was a time when I when my investment went up a lot, like d double or triple. But I was my my original investment was down eighty percent already. So even though I tripled my 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 lower number, it still was below what my original was. And this model is not factoring into decay risk. So decay risk is is. This uh, ETF, they don't hold actual securities like most mutual funds and ETFs that hold actual stock. What they do is they buy futures contracts on, on oil prices. And then when the, those future contracts expire, they have to buy more future contracts. So they have to continuously roll the futures contracts. And there's something called decay risk. And in the rolling of those contracts you lose money so that's what always people say oh there's decay risk and i think that's a small part of why you lose in these things the the uh, what are the fees or the or, or whatever the the rolling cost of the futures contracts and there's also expenses every etf mutual fund they have expenses because somebody has to run it so i didn't even build in the the decay risk and the expenses into the model. I just did it on a straight 
randomizer. If I built it in, it would be zero a lot sooner. And you might be saying, well, you're, you're assuming it's, it's going to be flat, the price of oil. I'm sure it's going to end up going up over time, and it will go up over time. And even if I built into the model where there'd be more positives than negatives, which I did that originally uh, in one of the variations of this model, it's still so I hope it's clear now or a little clearer why UCO and USO are such bad investments. And I see people on a Facebook groups ask, why do people say not to until this long term? And I try to write in a message and I don't think it even gets through to them. Like sometimes they respond, but I don't even think they either they don't believe me or they don't know what I'm talking about. So this video maybe will, if I show, if I sent them this video, they would understand it, possibly what I'm talking about. Not that it matters to me. If you lose money, I mean, I don't want people losing money, but it doesn't affect me personally. But I, I originally put this together for my own personal use. But to kind of bring it back to today, so I was really jazzed up that this model like helped me prove something that bothered me for a few years. Why my biggest, my worst investment occurred. I never really understood it. I just kind of like took it. It's just, if a company goes bankrupt, I understand. They just ran a bad business. They couldn't uh, get enough cash flow and they went bankrupt. But this, I just couldn't understand why I lost so much money. So, so after I put this model together, I was all excited. I showed people, uh, my friends who were in finance. Um, and then I, I wanted to do another model. I thought it'd be fun to try to predict stock prices. And so what I did was copy people's models on YouTube. And in order to try to figure out how to calculate stock prices. And the model did work for maybe half the deals I looked at. Because discounted cash flow models mainly work for larger companies that have consistent cash flows, consistent net income, that pay little dividends. But there was a lot of companies the model didn't work. So it's it's kind of like anything in, in, that you learn. If you learn something like in school or you or somebody explains something to you, you don't really get it until you start doing it, practicing it. It's kind of like riding a bike like you can't like listen to somebody explain it or watch youtube videos of people riding bikes and then after spending months of research on how to ride a bike you ride the bike you're going to fall off you're not going to really understand how to do it until you start pedaling and falling down and getting back up and then you start learning the nuances of what to do and then you get your balance down same thing with this like the model didn't really work that well Initially, I mean, it kind of worked on some things, but then when I started doing more one-off kind of non-vanilla type deals, the value, the estimated stock price was either negative $1,000 or like $500 and it was trading at 20. So it just didn't make sense. So I refined my model a lot. And I've, I have now four discounted cash flow models built into the one Excel spreadsheet. And if you're familiar with Excel, you could do like nested formulas inside other formulas, and then you could do variations of things. So, so now my model can handle a, a really wide range of deals. The only thing it can't handle is when a company reports negative free cash flow, negative net income, because I have no information to work off of. The stock price is always going to be negative. And, and also, it, this kind of cash flow models don't work for REITs. But now after doing so many REITs, I probably did a dozen REITs on my channel, my model works really well on REITs. I have a REIT built into the model. So, so even though there's four models, there's, there's a REIT. So actually there's eight models because the REIT uses those four models and the four regular models for non-REIT deals. So it's like eight models within that one spreadsheet to figure out the intrinsic stock price of the company. And people ask me 
all the time, like every day, can you send me your Excel file? Or, or the nicer people say, did you post that onto a website where we can access it and figure out how to use it? In instead of just asking me outright, send it to me. So even if I sent the model to people who requested it, I don't think they would get that much value out of it. There's so many assumptions. Every time I look at a deal, there's so much I have to figure out on which model to use and then which variation within the model. And then there's some like airlines, for instance, I have to use a different revenue number for next year because the revenues are would be way overstated. There's just so much that goes into it. If I just gave it to a stranger, I don't think they would get much value out of it. I, I hope to get to a point where the model is really refined and I could get to a point where I put it onto a website so people can use, use it, just input the numbers. I do have a website to how to value a company, like a small business. Um, but I, I wouldn't know how to enter complex equations onto a website in order to have it spit out a value. But there's plenty of people who can figure that stuff out. So that's kind of the evolution of the channel. If anybody was curious or if anybody even stayed for the end of this video, 